Okay, so for your review, this first part was just telling me why they were congruent or even if they were congruent. But if they were congruent, by what? Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, all those different things. All right. So number one, I know that I can draw these angles in because they're vertical. So because they're vertical, I know that they're congruent. So now I want to look at each triangle separately. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So because they match up, I know that they're congruent by angle, angle, side. Okay. And then I have... A, B, C is congruent to E, D, C. All right, because remember it goes one tick mark, no tick marks, two tick marks. So I go one tick mark, no tick marks, two tick marks. Number two, I see that each triangle shares that side so I know that it's going to be congruent for both. So now I look at each one. Side, side, side. Side, side, side. So now because they match up, I know that they're congruent by side, side, side. And I go look. A, B, C. That was two tick marks, one tick mark. So I know it's going to be congruent to the other two tick mark, one tick mark. So A, D, C. All right, number three, the only thing I know I can draw in is that vertical angle. So now I look at each one. Angle, 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 angle. So yes, those are all the same, but remember angle, angle, angle is not one of my things that tells me if it's congruent or not. So I'm going to write NP, and because I don't, or because they're not congruent, I can't write this. You can only write that for whenever they are congruent. So I'm also going to write NP. Number four, again, the only thing I can draw in is my vertical angles. So now I cover it up and I see angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So I know they're congruent by angle, side, angle. So now I go A, B, C, so no, no arcs, one arc, two arcs. So I have to do the same direction. No marks, one arc, two arcs. So E, D, C. Number five, there's nothing I can draw in. There's no vertical angles and there's no shared sides. So cover each one up. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So that's how I know they're congruent. And then I have A, B, C. So right angle, regular angle, no angle. So I'm going to go right angle, no, or regular angle, no angle. So right, one arc, nothing. Right, one arc, nothing. So E, B, D. Okay, number six, they share that side so I can draw the tick marks in. So now I'm going to look. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So that's why they're congruent. And then I go A, B, C. So one tick mark, two tick marks. So I need to go one tick mark, two tick marks. So D, B, C. Number seven, again, they share a side. So I know that I can put in the tick marks. So now I cover it up and look. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So that's why they're congruent. And then I go A, B, C. 
which again is one tick mark, two tick marks, so I have to go one tick mark, two tick marks, D, C, B. Okay. Number eight, I have vertical angles, so I can draw those in. So now cover each one up, side, angle, side, side, angle, side. That's why they're congruent. And then I have A, B, C, which was no tick marks, two tick marks. So I go no tick marks, two tick marks, E, D, C. Okay, number nine, they share that side. So I can add a tick mark in, okay. Also, these are parallel. So see how I just formed a Z? These angles are my alternate interior angles, so I know that they're congruent. So I can draw them in. Only the ones that are on the little inside corner of my Z. All right, so now I cover it up. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. That's why they're congruent. And I go A, B, C, which is right angle, no angle, angle. So I go right angle, no angle, angle. D, C, B. Number 10, again, they share a side. So I'm going to draw on the tick marks, cover up one of them, side, angle, side, cover up the other one, side, angle, side. Okay, so it's side, angle, side, and now I have A, B, C, which is one tick mark, no tick marks. So I go one tick mark, no tick marks. So C, D, A. Number 11, same thing, it shares a side. So now I go look, side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So that's why they're congruent. And then A, B, C went no tick marks, two tick marks. So I go no tick marks, two tick marks, D, B, C. Last one on there, I know that these are vertical angles. Cover it up. I have side side angle, which I can't have, and side side angle, which I can't have. That's not one of our things, so it's not possible. And because it's not possible, I cannot write a congruency statement. So that's not possible. So just like I did, if you have trouble seeing if it's side, 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 angle, side, all that stuff, make sure that you're covering up like how I did and you're finding the pattern for each triangle. That will really help you. Okay. Number 13, in triangle DOG, angle D was congruent to angle O. DG was equal to 4X minus 7. OG was equal to 3X plus 8. Angle G was 2X. Okay, so you have to think back to isosceles triangles. Remember, our opposite sides from the angles are what are congruent. So because these two sides are congruent, I can set those equal. 3X plus 8 equals 4X minus 7. So now I solve for x, minus 3x, minus 3x, plus 7, plus 7, okay? So I end up getting that x is equal to 15 because of 8 plus 7. Once I have that x, now I can go plug it in to find angle G. So 2 times 15, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so don't forget about that isosceles triangle stuff. If the angles are equal, then the opposite sides are equal. Okay, 14 in triangle PIN. P 
PI is congruent to PN. I is 8x minus 9. So angle I is 8x minus 9. And angle N is 5x plus 12. Okay, same thing as up here, but now it's opposite. Instead of giving the angles, they gave the sides. So if I know that these sides are congruent, I know that my opposite angles are congruent. So this angle is equal to this angle. So now that I know that my equations are equal, because those are what they are for the two angles, I can set them equal. 8x minus 9 equals 5x plus 12. And whenever you end up solving for x, I get that 3x is equal to 21. Divide by 3, and I get that x is 7. Okay? Now that I have x, I can go plug it back in into these angles. And then whatever I get there, I know that I can add them together and subtract from 180. And that's going to give me angle P, which is 86 degrees. Okay, so don't forget about adding these two and subtracting from 180. Next page. Okay, make sure that you know these properties and these theorems and these definitions because you're going to need to be able to tell me them on the test tomorrow. All right, so they're saying if C is the midpoint of segment AE, then AC is congruent to CE. Okay? I know that because that is the definition of a midpoint. The definition of a midpoint says that if you have a midpoint, then it splits it in half and those two segments are congruent. All right, then they said if AB is congruent to AC, then angle B is congruent to angle 1. Well, I know that's true because this is an isosceles triangle, which means that the opposite angles are also going to be equal. So that is my isosceles triangle theorem. Now they're saying angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Angle 1 congruent to angle 2. Well, if you look at it, I know those are vertical angles. I know, if, if, I know that if they're vertical angles, then they're congruent. So that is my vertical angle theorem. Okay. Now on to the other picture. If JG bisects FH, then I know that FG is congruent to GH. Okay? I know that I can conclude that because that is the definition of a segment bisector. Okay? JG is congruent to JG. I don't even need to look at the picture for that. I know that if they look the same, then <clears throat> that's my reflexive property. Okay, kind of think like if you were to look into a mirror and see your reflection, then you would be seeing the same thing. Okay, so imagine that like your congruency is a mirror, so that will help you remember reflect, which is your reflection property. Twenty-one, they're saying if segment JG bisects angle FG, sorry, FJH, then 3 has to be congruent to 4. Well, I know that's true by the definition of an angle bisector. I know that if I have an angle bisector, it's going to give me two congruent angles because it splits it in half. Okay, this last one, I don't need a picture for at all. If I know that two triangles are congruent, I know that anything in that triangle is going to be congruent because of CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. OK? 
Okay, as long as your triangles are congruent, anything will be congruent. Or, I'm sorry, any of the corresponding parts. So, FJ, HJ. All right, so those are all of your reasons why. This is why I'm allowed to say this. I'm allowed to say this because of this. Okay, so taking it one step further, instead of just saying why, now they want to know what I can conclude. All right, so looking at this picture, if I know that AB is congruent to CD, because that's what they gave me, then I know that angle 3 is congruent to angle 1. Okay, look at what type of angles they are. They're corresponding angles, so I know that from the corresponding angle theorem. The corresponding angle theorem is what tells me that if they're corresponding, they will be congruent. 24, they said that 2 and 4 are right angles. So if I know that they're right angles, then I know that they have to be congruent to each other because they're both the same measure. Okay, I know that if they're right angles, they have to be congruent because of the right triangle, or sorry, right angle congruence theorem. Twenty-five. Given that AB is congruent to BD, I can conclude that angle A is congruent to angle D. All right, this is an isosceles triangle, which means that the opposite angles of the tick marks are congruent. That is my isosceles triangle theorem. Last one on this page, they said that BC was perpendicular to AD. So if that's perpendicular, I know that these have to be right angles. So I know that angle 3 and angle 4 are right angles. And I know that because that's what the definition of perpendicular lines is. It says that if it's perpendicular, then I have right angles. All right. A couple more on the back. They said that AC was congruent to CE. BC was congruent to CD, and AB was congruent to DE. All right, I can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent, so ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. Okay, remember that order matters. Three tick marks, two tick marks, so three tick marks, two tick marks. All right, I know that they're congruent because this is side, side, side. This is side, side, side. Their sides are all congruent, so that's why they're congruent. Twenty-eight, they said that AB was congruent to BD. Angle one was congruent to angle two. And BC is congruent to BC. Okay. I know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. Okay, again, remember the order. ABC, so DBC. I know that those are congruent because this is side angle side and this is side angle side. So that's how I know they're congruent. All right, last two, proofs. So remember, even if they didn't give you all this, you would know where to start because you always start with your given, okay? They're saying that RT bisects QRS. Well, how do I know that? They gave it to me up here. So that reason was given. All right, so if RT is bisecting angle QRS, then I know that these angles are equal. Okay, so they already said that. QRT 
is congruent to SRT. I know that because that's the definition of an angle bisector. I know that that's what an angle bisector does. It cuts the angle in half. Next, they told me that RT was congruent to RT. So again, remember, like looking into a mirror, you see your reflection because it's the same. So that's my reflective property. Okay, angle one is congruent to angle two. Well, again, if I look up here, that was given to me. Okay, so now that I have all this information, see how I have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle? Well, I know that that's what makes my triangles congruent. So I know that triangle RTQ is congruent to triangle RTS by angle, side, angle. Okay, so remember what you're trying to prove is always your last step. Last one. AE bisects BD. Well, I know that because that was given right here. If AE is bisecting BD, then I know that BD was cut in half, which is what they're telling me here. They told me that BC is congruent to CD because I know that's what a segment bisector does. So the definition of a segment bisector. All right. Angle one is congruent to angle two. Well, if I look over here, I know that's true because they're vertical angles. So that's my vertical angle theorem. All right. Next, I look back up here and I see that they gave me that AC was congruent to EC. Okay, that was given. So now they want me to prove that these triangles are congruent. I know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC because of side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So side, angle, side. That's what tells me that they're congruent. All right, so make sure that you understand how to use all these properties. Make sure that you understand how to do these steps. Okay, as long as you know how to do this, this part should be easy because all it is is telling me the conclusions and the why. Okay, so that's all that is. This is just telling me the why. All right, and then make sure that you don't forget your isosceles triangle stuff and make sure that you are good on telling whether it's angle, angle, side, 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 not possible, all those different things. All right, so make sure you study.